Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right, okay. we're set. Okay. Yep. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by a rem remote means. Um, uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, we will, in the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst Town website and YouTube an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comp comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. I call this meeting to order. And um, I need to uh, look at the agenda. Um, so we uh, we start. Do we have any members of the public uh, with us today? I'm not seeing. No. Okay. All right. So now I want to turn the motor vehicle abatements reports over to the either the interim assessor or the principal assessor, whichever one is going to take this. The, Richard, the, minute, that? the minutes. Richard. Yeah, the minutes. Oh, excuse me. Oh, the minutes weren't mentioned in the um, uh, approved huh. minutes weren't mentioned in the agenda. Hmm. They weren't. They aren't listed on the agenda. Uh oh, bad uh -oh. me. Um, can we? Uh, we can I'm we fired. <laughs> Stop uh, it. <laughs> uh, we're not uh, firing you. Would require a lengthy public process. <laughs> so I don't think we want to do that. Um. Um. So, uh, gentlemen, have you had a chance to review last uh, the meeting, the minutes of September 27th, 2021? No, I move to approve them. Okay. Second, all Second. those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Now we can now we can move to the motor vehicle abatements. Do you want me to do it, or do you want to do it? I want you to do it. Okay. Can you blow it up? Or, well, no, I'm sorry. Board? Whichever one of the, whichever whoever's it, whoever decided to do it. David, I think it's okay if you want to, just because I wasn't there for any of these. All right, Lee, is that big enough? No, you're, you're oh. getting there. There you go. There you go. Okay. The wrong page. What's the agenda? That's the That's agenda. The agenda. You, you need to scroll down. Oh, sorry. Right. Oh, there's there's a minute. Minute. Okay. okay, here we go. There they are. Hold it. It's out of order. Yep. Okay, the first one we've got is just a simple motor vehicle excise abatement, and it's for 445.60. Uh, I think we're just the wrong way around on the agenda, so don't, we'll figure that. And it's the usual thing. It's just transfers and rebuilds, and so... That's okay. pretty much standard. I move to a. Uh, I move to approve that set of abatements. Second. Four hundred forty-five dollars and sixty cents. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And this is the second set of abatements for fourteen seventy or fifteen fifty-four ten. Sorry, uh, it's the same thing. There's a lot of UMass on there, or Hampshire College on there, and a couple of UMass, so that's why it's so high. I move to approve uh, that set of abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 This is easy. Uh, motor vehicle access, this is commitment number four for calendar year 21. And it's for $73,174.76. And um, that's really it. We're just committing it now to the collector. How many of these do we usually do in a year? Really all depends, Ken, or sorry, Richard, on when people get new cars or whatever they do. We could literally we could get one right in, at, uh, into next year because people will be buying cars through December. So it could be nine, 10, or 11. Okay. okay. So we, we, need to, uh, we need to approve our signatures on this, on this sheet, correct? Correct. All right, I move that we uh, approve this. Um, what, what are we calling it? What is this? This is a warrant? A warrant. Uh, warrant I, to the collector. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, I yep. move that we approve this, uh, our signatures for this warrant. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
And the next page is just a commitment. That's just the same thing. So we'll take care of that. Okay. And we have to sign this too, don't we? If we were, if we were live, we together, we would have signed this too, right? Correct. All right. I move to approve our signatures on this, uh, on this commitment. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, that's just the same that's great I thought of that part. okay all right uh, uh this is a chapter 61 uh updates for mary vendette and edward vendette uh briefly all we need to do the the forester has completed the form and is going to uh, has said what they have staked out as chapter land so we will need the chair to come in and we will need you to come in to do this because it's going to have to be notarized that chair that that sounds like me yeah okay and what you would like me to come into town hall and sign that one yeah okay all right um and uh are the sig uh, uh so this is strictly me and not the rest of do we vote on this oh yeah you vote on it yes it's an extension of a 10 years it's the next set of 10 years for forestry land okay well so they can they can go forever every 10 years renew it uh, yeah, as long as they meet the guidelines for the state forester. So they have to ask the forester to come in every 10 years to look at they it? Have to, they have to file a new plan, yeah. And, I don't know. Do you want to educate us now or do you want to wait until we're done? Let's finish. Okay. There's one more after this. It's a 61B, so. Yeah. Okay. So I, I guess I am moved to approve the, the chair's signature on this um, on this document. Yeah. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Now, uh, we won't have to sign a release for chapter nine for 61B. I don't have it, but I know Teresa sent you a separate copy of yes yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I was having trouble getting it to work at home, so I didn't get it done until I saw her talk to Teresa yesterday. Teresa, so, can you share? Um, if you give me a second, I could see, I actually, do I have, I don't have it on the computer. Actually, hold on one sec. Give me a minute. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I'll talk through it. And I'm in the, about the 61s. See if this I is a release of land of uh, Hickory for applied golf on Hickory Road Ridge. This is the old uh, golf course that the town is going to be taking over. We're going to be buying it from applied golf and there's going to be a, a um, solar Oh, as on part of it, I think about 25 acres. Uh, and so this is just getting the release ready for them for when they close in November. So David, you're said, having a hard time finding it. I have it right on my screen if if David wants to. I, I found, in. sorry, I found the scan, but I don't know how to share on my computer, so. If David, if you stop sharing, okay. then I think we can. Teresa, do you see at the bottom, there's a green. Oh, shared yeah. Okay. Screen. So hit shared I screen. I think if you just click that, you just have to give it the authorization to be able to do that. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Richard. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's all right. Um, uh, Kim is going to think I just crawled out from under a rock, but um, <laughs> could you explain for tax purposes uh, just what we're doing here Can, in layman's terms? David? Are you asking me? Well, or either one of you, actually. <laughs> And you're talking about the the lean, what yes, we're doing, yeah. is, is that what you mean? Yeah. I can go ahead and, and explain. So- um, Can you guys with, see that? Yes, Not I yet. got it now. Okay. Not yet, keep clicking. Not yet, there you go. I've got, I've got eyesight, I've got eyeglass problems, so that's why my head is so close to the screen. That's okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, hit the plus button once. If you um, expand your screen so it covers your whole screen, it might help too. Yeah. There you go. Is that better? Stretch your screen, Teresa. It there is. Oh. I'm okay. just gonna move move it at this point. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. So this is basically just someone is removing themselves. So they're no longer going to use the land for recreational purposes, or they just don't want to be involved with the chapter. 
Uh, most likely they're probably removing it because they're not going to be using it for recreational purposes. So this is a release of the lien. So the tax lien that's applied when you join Chapter 61A, Chapter 61, or Chapter 61B gives the town first right of refusal when you are to sell the property. Um, so when you decide if, if and when you decide you don't want to be involved with the chapter anymore, um, you would pay the rollback tax and then you would remove your lien so the town no longer has that first right of refusal. And that first right of refusal is just basically saying that if they're to sell the property, the town has the first right to purchase it at market value. Okay. And what is the rollback tax? So the rollback tax will be on the last five years, assuming that they've been enrolled for um, in, in chapter 61B, I believe it's five years. Okay. Um, in chapter 61A, they have to be enrolled for 10 years. Um, but if they if they take their, their property out of the chapter, then they would pay the last five years. Um, and it's going to be the difference of what they should have been taxed versus what they were taxed because of the agricultural credit. Okay. Plus, okay. plus interest as well. Okay. But in this case, it doesn't apply because the city's buying it. Correct. Um, so the, in this case, the rollback tax does not apply. Correct. Okay. okay. The city's buying it. Okay. Because it's the town can. It's the buyer that would pay it, right? The rollback tax. Yeah, however, they would normally agree between them, but yes, yeah, usually yeah. the buyer. Okay. Jason, so, do you want to? Okay. Is this another situation where the chair has to come in and sign? No, but we need you to vote on it. Okay. So should I stop sharing at this point so you can take over? No, um, please. Can you scroll down? I just was curious what the bottom of the document looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David, I don't know how, how do you notarize something if somebody doesn't come in and sign it? You can't. Oh, sorry. I forgot about the notary in this one. Yeah, Richard, we need you as well. So I can kill two birds with one stone by coming in? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Does the chair have the authority to sign for three people there? Any one of you can sign for that. The, we only okay. need one for the notary. Okay, good. Okay. But since and I'm David, coming you, in. David, you said something about 25 acres. What was that? 25 acres was going to be used for solar. Oh, okay. It's 149.87 acres of land right. by itself. Mm -hmm. But that's an entire parcel being released, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the old golf course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any so, questions? No. Okay. I move we vote. Or did we vote on it? Not yet. You, you need. Oh. I, 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 you, you've moved to uh, approve approve the, the board signature on this one. So yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I heard three voices there. Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay, aye. thank you. Yep. Thanks. You know, I, I, I so, um, I, I'm so nostalgic about those days when we used to just shove documents across each other across the table. <laughs> was so much, it was, and so I'm, David, I'm hoping we get back to that with Kim at some point soon. Yeah. What's the update on that, David? Uh. As far as I know, it's still the end of January. It's still the end of December. End of December, before they review it again. Uh, yeah. So I think a December meeting they're going to review it. Okay. Uh, or one of the December meetings. Or maybe the new council. I'm not sure which it is, it's going to be, but. Um, so either way, well, yeah, that's true. I don't know. The new council mm -hmm. starts in January. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, where are we on the? Uh, where are, are we on the agenda? Well, would this be a good time to discuss the sixty-one? Yes. Uh, for Ken. No. Ken was asking about 61 values. Kim, you're okay with this? Yep. Okay. The 61A values are set by the state uh, forest, or not forester, agricultural commission uh, based on productivity from the land. So in effect, they will send us every year an updated valuation based on the different types of crops and it could range from zero dollars per acre to I think it's twelve or thirteen thousand dollars for cranberry bogs, which we don't have. So it's across the board, and they evaluate it every year and give us new figures that we will put in. 
61B is really just 25% of the market value of the property. So that's an easy one to work with. And the forestry, the forestry commission to set the values per acre. <laughs> and there's one value west of the Connecticut and one value east of the Connecticut. So it depends how they set it. And it's based on a per acre amount. And again, we assess it market value and then they take it away. Are we? We assess at market value, but we tax them on the forestry land value. So what is, it, what is it west of Connecticut? Sorry? What is it west of the Connecticut? Or e where east? I think it's I think one of them 79 or one of them 69. There's really very little per dollars per acre. There's very little. Nine land. dollars per acre? Yep. Oh, jeez. They've got a good lobby. What can I say? <laughs> but... Uh, now, the 61A and the 61B require an annual filing with us by the 1st of October each year. The forestry requires a uh, filing every 10 years, as you just did with the Vendette property there. Yes. Uh, the what happens is the forester will get the forms to the new owner by September 1st of the 10th year, and they will get it to us by October 1st, so we can get it on for the next uh, fiscal year. And that's basically the rules and regulations for it. There are, for uh, 61A, there has to be some production. I think it's $500 for the five, first 500, $500 for the first five acres and then $5 an acre over that. And I'm shooting from the top of my head, so I'm not quite sure, okay? But I know the first 500, uh, five acres is 500, and they're supposed to meet that each year. They can hay it, they can crop it, they can lease it out. Mostly in Amherst, we lease uh, the 61 land we've got to other people for crops. And here endeth the lesson. What about 61B? Refresh my memory, what that's for? That's recreational, usually golf courses or walking trails. Amherst College uses it for walking trails and for allowing people to walk through their property so they get a reduction on land that they own. Okay. So basically the local town assessment office has nothing to do with this except for process what the state gives them. Correct. So that bird sanctuary land on the Amherst College, uh, the Amherst College bird sanctuary, that is taxed? Yes, yeah, so at twenty five percent of market value. Okay. How does solar usually affect? <laughs> at the minute, it would appear the solar land is going to have to be separate and classified as commercial land when we go along. Uh, we're deep in the throes of negotiating for Hickory Ridge and um, the the old landfill. Uh, as at the moment, the law has changed. So we're actually going to have to tax the land that we own and tax them to the people. Oh, great. Uh, so it's, it will become commercial landly. Yeah, so we'll look forward to making that transition. I well, mean, I don't know if we look forward. Sorry, Kim, what did you say? Sorry, oh, sorry, I was saying goodbye to someone. <laughs> um, so, so that's going to create some new exciting documents for us to look at uh, at some yeah. point. Uh, no, actually, because the, the manager's got the authority to uh, deal with the solar land. So the, the, that was voted in 2015 by the old town meeting. And we just got confirmation that that still, still is the case. So the assessment office just sits by and waits until they get a figure from the town manager. No, no. Sorry, oh. Ken. Town okay. manager's the authority to sign off. Oh, Kim, I and I have, Kim and I worked on the values. Uh, for the land, and we have several different types, but I think we're leaning towards in the future a flat rate on a yearly basis uh, uh, for taxes. The ones we're working on now, because there's also land rent involved, is all it's a bit more complicated, but we can handle it and get it done, uh, get it, the pilot and all done for it. So there's a lump sum payment of the same amount every year. Mm. Does a solar parcel have to have its own frontage or can you put a solar parcel inside a chapter 61A and have no access to roads? Yep. If you look, okay. if you even go up to UMass, you'll find that all the ones that are on top of the roofs of the buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, they don't, 
they just they can have just a common um conservation access or, or forestry land access you know, just a road that they cut themselves there's no requirements for zoning yeah. access ways that i'm aware well, of so basically a parcel that was 61a and they decide to do solar um they can stick that in the middle or wherever they want on that parcel and that will get the solar parcel will get it's not a parcel, or is it a separate parcel of solar? It gets a separate valuation. We, we're um, mm -hmm. changing it to commercial land. Okay. Sorry. Well, 61 land is commercial, but we're making a commercial value so we can value it at the full market value rather than 61A. Okay. And the but value it is. Still be a, it could still be a part of one big parcel. Yeah. You just okay. separate out that particular piece of land that it's sitting on. I don't know if that's. Yeah, that is. Yeah. And that, and then both of the chapter is not valued except by the state every year, but the solar will be valued by you every year. The land, yeah. The land, it's not a, like a 20 year agreed tax. It's reviewed every year. No, the pilots an agreed 20 year period for the amount of money they're going to pay us each year. And we'll split it up between the pilot, the, the land value and uh, I on the land on the rent, the lease. If they're, they're leasing land from us, so they'll be paying us as well for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not. I'm not more. I'm more thinking the private owner, not the town. No, uh, private owner. Then we'll just get the we'll get the value of the uh, land that's on it as commercial land, and we'll get the value of the pilot as well. And so the pilot will be a fixed number for twenty years. Yeah, each year. But the land value could change each year. The land value could change, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and most case, likely will with the tax rate. And in case anybody from the public ever looks at this tape, pilot means <laughs> payment in lieu of taxes, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So back to David, the assessment value, not just the tax rate, but the assessment value could change each year too on that land. Correct. Along with every yeah, whenever we do any changes, the value will all change. Okay. There's nothing unique about how the <laughs> land gets taxed. It's no. like any other commercial property. Right. The land. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I have to say in that matter. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, the agenda indicates a discussion about the residential exemption. Uh, it's really not much of a discussion, except from the point of view that. I need, we would need to know, are you guys thinking of attending on Monday night? And if you are, are you thinking of talking? Because if you are, we need to post the meeting. Uh, I'm in, Bo I'm in Boston away from a computer. Is it next week, David? Monday night, yes. Mm -hmm. Same are time. You, are we invited? Uh, we're invited, but I don't know what the time, it's not a time specific. That's time Lee, I don't know what time it's going to be. Okay. Is there, there any reason to start at 6 30, but I'm not sure when they'll discuss? Yeah. Is there any reason to think they're not going to vote for it, David? Not in my mind, no. Kim? I, mean, I don't think so. I mean, it seems like the meeting that we attended uh, two weeks ago or a week ago, they seem to be interested, but know that this was very short notice and that there needs to be some more research done and you know they wanted to learn more about it before they voted for it so I, it seemed to me like they wanted to wait have there i think been, we will have some more sorry rich i was going to ask have there been i think this is something we're entitled to know have there been inquiries to either one of the two of you about the residential exemption since the meeting from council no. members I, no oh, not from from council me. Yeah, Andy Steinberg did, but it was on behalf of a council uh, of a per constituent. That would be Nick, right? Victoria, yeah, Nick Gravy. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think we may get a couple of questions because I know Nick is uh, putting the blog out before the meeting, and there was a story in the Gazette last week about the new tax rate. So we may have a couple of story, uh, questions. I had a few calls, I think two this this week, um, just asking sort of to explain what's going on and what it is, but um, nothing, it was just, you know, just residents, nothing really 
more so just knowledge to what it is. And Kim, you've mastered explaining the residential exemption over the phone for like less than three minutes. Have you gotten good at this or, I mean. <laughs> um, so in Greenfield, this has been something that, that has been brought up a few times along with a split tax rate. So this is like, you know, uh, a road that I've been down before. <laughs> okay. That's great. I'm not sure I could explain it in, let's say less than 180 seconds uh, to somebody. Um... Well, I guess, David, are you gonna be there? I mean, so it sounds like somebody needs to be there to answer questions, technically. Oh, uh, sure. I know Sean and Kim and I are all okay. planning on being there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, can't we just be there as residents or not? Yeah. 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 So we, we don't have to be there and be able to speak. No. But we can speak as a resident if we want to, I guess. Right. You're not going to vote in anything? Without a meeting or anything. Well, he, he, here's the problem. If you're there, um, if you're well, there's a prop. There's an open meeting law problem, I suppose, right? With uh, yeah. two, two members attending. Only if you, if two of you intend to speak. If one oh. of you is going to talk, then it's fine. But if, if two of you decide to talk, then then that's where the issue is. Well, I won't be there, so. Okay. I don't intend. I don't intend to talk. I don't either. <laughs> that doesn't mean I won't. <laughs> <laughs> if, something, if some wild thing comes up. <laughs> the only thing I saw was kind of left open was, and Lynn sort of said, well, she'd check into it, but the council was a little concerned. Okay, how do we make sure the town gets involved next year so we're not under a gun here? That's the only thing I saw left open. And I, I assume Lynn's going to address that some way with the rest of the council. Yeah. Yes, I, I see no room on their plate for this uh, because it's an incredibly it, it will essentially suck all the oxygen out of everything else. I mean, it, it's a public process with hearings and it, I mean, I don't know where they have room on their plate for this. The way I explained it in Greenfield when I, when we gave our recommendation last year was, um, you know, of course you want to help your residents because you want people to stay, you want people to come in, you want young families to, to be in your community. But the way that this works is um, with a fragile commercial base, you're actually hurting the commercial as well as the residential. Because like looking at Amherst downtown, we've got a lot of small businesses, a lot of mom and pops. We've already seen with the pandemic that, um, you know, some of them like Judy's, for example, hasn't been able to make it. Um, so, so if you do this tax, the first year is probably going to be which tax? Are you, which tax you talk? Uh, I'm about sorry, the residential that? exemption. I'm okay, not the split rate. rate. I mean, we're all agreed. Yep. Split rate doesn't work. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Going on the wrong path. Okay. <laughs> But yeah. the, resi I mean, the residential exemption, the way I looked at it here in Greenfield, the way I explained that it's not the best idea is really, um, if you look at the towns on the Cape where people are, are buying houses because it's their second homes, they're paying you know, an astronomical amount for these, these buildings and you have your, your, your full-time residents, they maybe didn't pay that enormous price for their home and they've been there for you know 50 years but their values are incredibly high because of those vacation homes um you know we have a similar situation you could compare to because we have all the residential um you know people are renting these properties but it's still a really fragile you know sort of like the commercial base where it's fragile you you don't want to those people who have been here for 50 60 years um you know you want to help them, but you also don't want to scare away the people who want to come in and maybe they have the money to spend on a, on a you know, larger house or the people who are renting. You know, maybe we have young families who are just starting out and can't now afford to come to Amherst because of the residential exemption is causing the rent to increase on these properties. So it's a tough one because you can see, you know, students don't care. They just pay whatever. But if you are looking at it on the side of, you know, a young family, um, someone who's trying to downsize, maybe they don't want to own a property anymore, it makes it tough for them. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very complex issue. Yeah. I mean, Greenville does have, we have 60% of our housing units rental now. And when that gets to be 80%, I think residents are going to be a little concerned yeah. um, because investors keep buying, but it's very complex. 
I don't know. And I guess the question would be, if this gets kicked down for another year, and I, I can understand the councils being full, uh, some of those council members are going to come back at saying, okay, this is the third year we're faced with a jam in, in our face that nothing's been researched or nothing's been done. And I, that's, I that's Paul's call in my mind. That's right, I, yeah. I agree. I mean, I think we have done what we can do. I do too. I, and, yeah. and therefore, yeah. I'd respond next year to the council. We mm -hmm. told you last year, the assessor and the, we did everything we've done and you decided not to go out to the community and that's fine. That was your call. Yeah. There's um, also the issue of, of, of resources required to, to do the additional work and, and, and it didn't sound like they were jumping up and down about uh, allowing that to happen. So is it, is it I, I think David, I've, I've gotten, I think mixed, well, mixed messages is what I want from David on this in the sense that is it, is it, am I wrong to say that there's really uh, implementing an exemption uh, it's impossible to do a high definition uh, view of what the consequences would be in every on every parcel in town without actually doing it. It's no, we, we could do an estimate of what the impact would be. We have done estimates of what the impact would be in each parcel at this current value and an estimated exemption of 15% and the estimated number of parcels that would qualify for that. And we could do that for 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way to 35% if we wanted to. All right. We, we could even on the apartment complexes, break it down to the no cost per apartment. We couldn't do it per uh, two, three, or four bedroom apartments, but we could per apartment. So you, you think we could actually get to a fairly accurate estimate of what the effect on rents would be in various buildings? He's already done it. He's done it. Yeah, we, we do have it. We did have it a couple of years ago, we can, right? Yeah, but it doesn't make sense until you get the community input. You know, right. You know, if I was a council person, I wouldn't stick my neck out and decide to change based on just facts like this. They're facts, mm. but they're not interpreted facts. Yes. Right. And, and you're going mean, to you, go ahead, Kent Richard. You know, what I neglected to say the other night, and I talked long enough as it was. Um, no, that was good. Um, you did well, a good job, Richard. I would love to be able to walk through my neighborhood and say, hey, I gave you all a tax break. I mean, <laughs> you know, this is all owner-occupied. I'd love to be able to walk through and say that with Mr. Burgess and my two friends on the uh, board of assessors, we gave you a tax break. That's but, not our role, Richard. Well, yeah. no, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's attract that would be attractive to me, but I just don't, I just have real doubts about what this would do. Um, to various renters in town. So, yeah, no, and I, don't know, yeah. And I don't know that many renters. You know. And forget the, for, uh, don't forget the renters, but just the whole idea of having the town broken into two buckets is not a great thought. Yes. Right, right. now, everybody's in the same bucket. They all get mm -hmm. taxed the same. Yes. And you can't argue against two, one bucket. And, and there's, I mean, I know that the, that residents probably don't feel this, but there's a fairness in that. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I don't know. So no, I don't plan on talking Monday night, but. Well, if you start talking, I'll just tell you to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means, that means you can't talk, Lee. Whoever yeah, talks right. first. Well, <laughs> okay. If, if, if we're not invited as uh, 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 panel members, then we are uh, listed as, uh, we, we would be just attendees. Is that right? Town attendees. So yet, we'd have to, yeah. So we'd have to ask for permission to talk. And so if you go, Ken, I believe you'd be limited, believe you'd be limited <laughs> to public comment. Exactly. Okay. I'm, so I, I'm not. I I'm not up for speaking. It's just that, I, you know, I assume David, you'll take care of it if they start. They start to go down the wrong road or something. So I'll I, do my best, I, and Kim will do her best as well. But because I we can't can do, do so much. Year. There's no way you can do it this year. I think the three of us may, may need to decide does one of us need to be available to talk in the in the regular discussion. Well then they have to it's be invited as a panelist. Yeah. Yes, but I'm 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 we're between the three of us, do we think that one of us needs to be invited into the discussion? I don't not with David there and Kim. 
I mean, all right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, okay. I, think that's, I agree. We did that last meeting. That's what our that's role fine. was. Yeah. That's fine. I love the the Ken Cargreaves. I want to remove myself from all the the messy <laughs> stuff approach. I like that. <laughs> it's not my role. It's the council role. Yes. We're there to provide data, and David can do that very well. All right. So, as the chair, have we exhausted this topic? Yeah. Along these same it. lines, um, I have thought. Um, about maybe sticking inserts into the final year tax bills about personal exemptions or the guidelines, you know, yes. that came up that maybe we're not doing enough. Yes. Is that, is that possible, David? Uh, expand the guidelines a little more. I looked at them, they're online, but they're kind of uh, not most commutative guidelines you could do. Maybe we could beef them up a little. You need me to come in. Stuff, do you need me to come in and stuff envelopes? <laughs> because I, yes, I, can it, it can be done. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be done this year because I know there's already other stuffers that are going in. Okay, but we can do it. And personally, and can we jump in here or not? I would rather see when we do the preliminary bills because after the first of July, we'll be sending out the information to people as well, and so it'll be fresh in their mind, and they can talk to their neighbors. So maybe maybe the preliminary bills might be the time for us to do that instead of the actuals. All right. I think yeah, that's, that's good too because then it's going to be fresh in their mind, and I think more likely than not, we would get a response. Whereas, yeah. like, if it's a whole year later, they might be like, "What is this? I'm not going to deal with it right now," and then forget. Yeah, and also you, they could they they could highlight or, or focus somehow on the web town website that uh, so that folks can can uh, um, find it easily. Uh, they're, they're kind of buried right now. You have to go through a couple of screens and know um, what you're I, looking for in order to get to it. Do I have a sense that some of our elderly people are, well, um, just <laughs> relating to my own experience, not fully elderly yet, um, that some elderly people who qualify for the exemptions may not be particularly nimble in getting onto the Amherst uh, Town website to look at this stuff? I think if we can talk with some people who are a good bit older that and the elderly you have in front of you at the minute, but uh, yes, there's some people who don't do it and some people don't want to do it. And, okay. and we have always tried to accommodate them either through the senior center or through Teresa and at the time, Laurie, they've always been ex available for Same them to same. come in and talk to. And now that the COVID's over, we're in the position we can do that again. But I, I, I think we're getting a generalized sense that the exemptions are not well known, not well publicized. Is that our is that our consensus on that? Yeah. At the moment, uh, I, think, we... I think it's worth another try. I know, yeah. David, you've gone over to the senior center and met with them. I mean, there have been things we've done. It's didn't you go over to the senior center? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's not like you haven't tried. It's just that let's try again. Teresa's mm -hmm. waving her hand like I don't know whether she's swatting a fly or whether she wants to say something. Uh, no, I was just telling somebody to go away. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> help, me, um, David, help me out, help me out to understand, why do we get the applications to review in January, February? When do they get we, sent in? Well, because we haven't set the tax rate until then, Ken. We don't know how much you're going to give them on the exemption. But when do the, I mean... I, I struggle with sending them out with the July tax bill. They don't fill them out until January then? They're going to sit on this stuff for six months? Well, we send them out. We send out the applications in July. So at that, that time, it's in our mind and we're dealing with it. So sending oh. out and asking for any new ones would be the time to deal with it. People can fill the application out anytime after July 1st. Okay. But we can't act on it until we set the tax rate. Okay, but I, I sort of, most of them are signed like in December or January. Why do they sit on them so long? Teresa? Um, I always ask myself that question. I mean, sometimes I get them back quickly and sometimes they say they don't receive them and I'll remail them. I usually will send out reminder, uh, okay. reminder ones to them. You know, if I don't get anything by October or something, um, I'll send out a reminder in another so these form. Are, these are people that have, filed them in the past correct oh correct. that's great so you you correct. update them anyway yes okay. yeah what we could do is we could make it a two-phase thing and have the council on aging send something out and their bulletins 
and at one time in the year, and then we could send it in the tax roll at another time. Okay. The double whammy. So do we have to revisit this topic and place it on an agenda at some point um, further further down the line here? Well, about, about providing more information about exemptions. Yeah, it sounds like maybe the aging should send it something out in December, David. Yeah, they could. Because, you know, the nice thing about sending in December is they still have three months to act on it. Yeah. People are still with time to file. Yeah. So does, do you, this, does David, this require... Do you, David, do you plan to comment back to the council about action um, to address the... Because it did come up in the last meeting. I, 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 at the last meeting, I did address it with... Uh, the Pam, what her name? Yeah. Miss Pam, yeah. I told her we did have exemptions available and that we could make more information available to people. Okay. I'm just trying to think like, I, I think that you guys do it slightly different in Amherst than in Greenfield. And because I we send out our um, applications also in, in July, the very end of June, and people are like asking for them. We get them, we get overloaded in the summer with them. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, um, so you send them out, Teresa, if I'm remembering correctly, you send them out in July to everyone that has applied last year. Is that correct? Right. In past years. Correct. Hmm. We don't maybe get what we should tax. do then is, is brainstorm, like, let's come back to this next week, maybe even, or, you know, next meeting, I should say, or, or even the following and, and just sort of brainstorm some thoughts of, of how else we could reach out. Because if we've done like a seminar at the senior center, if we've done mailings, if we've, you know, how else can we get them to apply? That's a, that's a good idea, Kim. So do we want to have this on the agenda for our next meeting? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I don't know what we want to call this um, information on exemptions. Yeah. Yeah. And personal yeah. exemptions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have, so anything else on this topic? I don't, the only thing I would suggest, can you have a, Feedback on that topic about age of counseling. Can they do something at year end still in their newsletter or something? You mean the senior center? Senior. Well, I don't know. Who are you talking I about? Get a, I get a <laughs> newsletter, friends of the senior center. Okay. Yeah, I get so that I. too. Okay. Yeah, we can ask them to put something in. Yeah. Because I'm not sure what their lead time is on that. What about putting something in the newspaper? Just a thought. I mean, I don't know that would be a cost, of course, to the town, but you know, just a thought anyway. I, I know a lot of elderly people actually still get the newspaper rather than reading it online. Mm -hmm. um, just, just a Certainly thought. worth pursuing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, it's important to remember the Daily Hampshire Gazette circulation now is down below 8,000, mm -hmm. the, so, the whole reading area, so. Really? So maybe not worth it then. Below 8,000. Right? Wow. Well, that's that's paper. Um, there's also yeah. online too, but yeah. 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 So why don't you brainstorm, you and David, Kim? You yeah, we can do that. What you think you want to do for the next meeting? Yep. Okay. We'll shake the marbles. <laughs> I have another question. Um, and I we're I think I don't know how much Ken and Lee get asked questions about the tax system in town, but I do. And so we're supposed to nominally have some command of this stuff. I'm trying to understand uh, what the reassessment trigger is and how that whole reassessment process go. How, what triggers it? How does it get in? How does it start? We, we've had sales above 10% of assessed value, correct? We've had a certain number of those and that triggers a reassessment. Am I? Kim? Are you, are you talking, that? Richard, for an individual house or for townwide? No, I'm talking about in general. I'm, I'm trying to understand the, the Merzbach article about the increase in taxes, I guess, is, is tied up with the whole business of reassessing properties. And there's a trigger, right, that in, in terms of the sales. That so I got a similar question actually yesterday. Um, from someone who was reading, I think the same article, um, and they were concerned about the residential tax hike, as they put it. Um, so, so what I did explain, the first thing that I explained is it's not just residential. Um, this year, maybe a little bit more so on residential in Amherst because of the way, that, and I think in many communities, the way that COVID has impacted the commercial um, base where, you know, like specifically in Amherst, 
there have been some vacancies that have come about. There have been businesses that have closed. So we don't want to raise the commercial values. There haven't really been any sales. So we're not really, you know, there's nothing fresh to look at to say, oh, well, commercial sales are increasing. So we should increase by X amount of dollars. Whereas the residential um, properties, whether it be single families, two families, three families, it doesn't really matter at this point. Everybody's just buying what they can get. So the increase has, um, you know, impacted the residential a little bit more so this year and maybe last year and maybe next year based on that. Um, but as for the actual physical inspection of a property, um, the state gives us a 10 year range to look at each and every property. So each and every property has their own 10 year schedule. Um, you know, if we do an inspection of any sort that resets that schedule to start say for example, this year. Um, so that there's that, but there's also, you know, if there is a sale that we find to be a little weird, um, maybe it's really, really, really high over their assessed value or really, really under. I know that here in Greenfield, we would probably try to take a peek at that and see what's going on. And, or if there have been building permits that have um, maybe caused that to fluctuate the value, the, the price, the sale price. Also, um, you know, if there if there's been work that's been done that we can see on the MLS listing that maybe there is no building permits for. I know here in Greenfield, we've had a lot of that happen. I don't know about Amherst because they just haven't gotten that far yet, um, but that would also trigger an inspection or at least a request to do an inspection, whether or not the people actually let us in is, is you know, another story. But, but it would only um, be for that property, right? Not for a class of properties, right? It could be a class of properties, depending on the circumstance. Um, you know, if we're looking at, if we're doing our sales analysis and we see that um, colonial homes are really selling way higher than everything else, you know, that might cause for inspections of those types of properties. If, if maybe it's a specific neighborhood, that could be, you know, a cause for an inspection in that neighborhood. Maybe there's something going on there that is causing the values to increase or decrease in that, you know, for that matter, it could go either way. So, um, so when you do that, does that become a matter of public record that you went and looked at a, a particular class of homes? And, and um, so what would be public record is that is that an inspection was done. The actual notes that we've written on the record card, um, you know, in, if someone asks for those, sure, but we wouldn't necessarily put those out there. Um, you know, David, maybe you can touch on more to actual times versus me just sort of speculating on, on what um, we do here in Greenfield versus how I would handle it, you know, going forward. Well, you, you know, you answered the question in one way. I, I, that's, um, I think it's right. We have, we're going to inspect if we see things going up. But what will trigger us is, Richard, every year we have to look at the sales report and see where we are. And we, ha we have to have at least 2% of the properties of the biggest class, which is residential, selling single families. We'll analyze those and see what percentage of market value we're at. And the, 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 everybody says 100%, that's not real. We're going to be at 90 to 110%. And if we go below the 90, we're going to want to push it back up. The reason we went up this year is that if you look at the 2020 sales, it made us raise them by 8% for the 20, FY22. And we're already, Kim and I are already looking at the 21s. And even with our new values, our percentage is dropping below 90 again. So we're going to have to raise it again next year, at least in the residential class. And so hopefully the commercial. Our percentage, meaning our assessed value is below 90%. Of... Correct, on average. Okay. So we want we look at that again, actually on the median, not the average, the median. And uh, so we'll look at that. And the, we don't have to make changes but every five years with the Department of Revenue. But if you don't, you could be looking at a 30% increase. So the last two years we raised, I think it was 5% last year and 8% this year, and probably at least 10% next year. But this doesn't change the total amount of money that's 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 actually taken in by the town no. above the two and a half plus new growth. Right. So as I, as I understand it, some people are, are gonna get a tax cut, aren't they? Well, the commercials definitely are. 
and anybody that we've lowered the value on on the residential wall, but otherwise they'll see an increase. Because even though the tax rate is coming down 50 cents or 55 cents, the valuations are going up as I say 8% on the residential mm -hmm. and not changing on the commercial. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a larger percentage of the uh, taxes are going to be residential. So they will go up because of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess I, I'm... Um... <laughs> Oh man, um, it's complicated, right? <laughs> I, I'm just so so. My sense of this is, at um, if there's a cap of two and a half plus new growth on how much money can be collected, um, this tax increase is not a is not that big a deal. I guess I just uh, um, this alleged tax increase, the rate's going to go down, right? Um, but but it's capped by this. I what I consider to be as a you know somewhat of a liberal as a uh, as a two and a half percent plus new growth cap, it's a pretty draconian cap. So the right, total but, amount of money that's coming out of people's pockets is still capped by the two and a half percent. Right? Yes, unless, unless right. But that. the problem yeah. is that the money is coming less out of the commercial this year and more out of the residential. Okay. So they have gone up more. So that is what causes the problem this year. The people are seeing more than they would have if we had raised the commercial at the same time. Everything would be hockey, Dory, okay. but it didn't. Okay. So we're essentially. Work. So we are essentially. Well, the 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 the, the greater amount of the tax burden is coming out of prop uh, residential property owners. Right. Okay. Which I, is the I, same you expect next year too. Right. Oh, definitely, especially considering the amount of new growth there is in the residential section. Yeah. Hmm. So this. I, is, so this is I've the heard, product of a withering commercial sector. Is that right? Yeah. Somewhat. Withering. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's gonna, doesn't help. <laughs> I, I've heard that that uh, currently, um, houses, uh, residential uh, transactions are selling thirty-five to forty percent over assessed value. Yeah. Um, is is that reasonable? Um, but but then it really depends on when the last assessment was done, right? Right. Well, they're looking at, they'll be looking at an FY21 tax bill, uh, which was before the 8% that we put on this year. Mm -hmm. So that 35% is a bit high. And it's mm -hmm. only going to be individuals. You know, the higher end properties are really selling for an awful lot of money. Mm -hmm. But the lower end properties are not. So it's not going to be a 35% when we go look at the median. And that's where we come into where Kim was talking about in more detail. We're going to look, we're going to stratify them based on the, the sales, uh, the valuation or sales price mm -hmm. and uh, the style and the location. So, you know, we may look at this and say Lincoln Avenue, Sunset, and all the rest of them need to get boosted up. Mm -hmm. Whereas a, a Glendale and Orchard Valley, mm -hmm. not quite so much. So, mm -hmm. at that time, we, we, this year we didn't. If you want, we did a quick and dirty assessment this year. Mm -hmm. Next year, we'll do an in-depth assessment. And it may actually be in areas of town. We'll see bigger changes than other areas of town. OK. I love, it when a I love it when a public official refers to something as quick and dirty. That's right in a public meeting. That's always great. <laughs> I, do, I, I don't Good like. enough for government work, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, another question that I've I've gotten here in Greenfield and in Amherst already actually is so the market values are really high right now. People are paying absolutely absurd amounts of money for these properties, but this is like inflated. This is having to do with COVID. Why do we have to look at this? And basically, it's it's really it's although it seems crazy because maybe it does have to do with COVID, maybe it doesn't. Whatever the case is. This is real time market. This is the DOR requires us to look at these, even if it's just a year that this happens in. Um, and if you if you remember back, I think it was in 2010 where the market crashed and the banks were just giving people money for whatever they wanted, even if they couldn't afford it. We still had to look at that. So values had to come down and then they went back up again. So it's it's I explained it yesterday as a roller coaster ride with the market. And unfortunately, even if it's frustrating because it's going either really high or really low, we have to look at it. And mm -hmm. it will go in the other direction because when things start to come down, so you know, so will sales will come down, so will values. Yeah, a um, couple, I guess, unrelated or related. 
Um, where are we, David, with the state? When do they come in and look at us again? Next year, FY23. FY. So what actual date is that then? Oh, well, there's no actual date yet, Ken. This will probably run all the way under this. Could run all the way to this time next year. So fill me in here. I'm not, I'm not following what Ken's asking about. Ken's asking when the next mandated recertification is. And it's an FY23. The last one was an FY18. Uh, every year we do have to, every fifth year we have to do a revaluation. So was yeah, that around for that first one? That last one? Was I, I don't know. That? Don't know. I guess I came in at 17, I think. You were probably here then. Yeah. So give us a quick overview, David, what that involves for you guys. Oh, that's well, Kim's been through one more recently than I have. She's been through one now. Oh, so I, right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll let her tell you. <laughs> um, so basically what happens is the very first step is the state, your rep will contact you. Um, in the case be, being, we were right smack in the middle of COVID. The, our rep here in Greenfield um, asked if I would send, you know, X amount of record cards. He gave me, um, you know, he was looking for, you know, 150 single family homes, sales and two comparisons, um, you know, X amount of commercial sales and two comparisons. So I sent that along. Um, he did his research. He came to town. He looked at all of our records. Normally they'd come here and do it and we would just print it out for them here. Um, but basically what they do is they take your records and they go and they look at the properties, they sit in front of them, they look at see, you know, what we have it listed as, um, you know, what the condition is, so on and so forth. And just sort of look to see, uh, they look at MLS to see, We this year here in Greenfield, we got back some stuff that said, you're missing bathrooms in these houses, you're missing finished basements based on MLS listings. So they kind of go through and just verify that like, you know, we're, we're really doing what we're supposed to be doing. They look at um, ratios to see if our ratios match that that 10% range that we can be in, whether it's 90 or 110. Um, if we have a, a particular class that's on the low end or on the high end, they'll say, you know, you got to look at these for next year. They'll, um, you know, I haven't, this is the first one that I've been through. So what comes next? Maybe David could help with that. But, but I know that they'll give you a list of things to work for towards in the next reval, what they want you to look at. Um, specifically, you know, once in, in Greenfield, they said, look at all your condos because they're really low. They're all over the place. Um, you know, so it's, it's basically just to check some balances to make sure that you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing in that interim years. Um, but again, you know, David, maybe you could touch on what's coming um, after the, you know, after the review of all the properties is done. Well, after they review them all and we're set, we're going to have to send out notifications. You've been through this before. We let people know the valuations and we're going to have hearings on them. Mm -hmm. We have to have a, a ten, at least a 10 day opens period. And Amherst, we've normally gone for a couple of months. So people come in and talk about their values informally or how they were, how they were come to them. Uh, and then it's just a matter of once that's, once you've signed off on that and the DOR is approved on it, we basically go through the same course that we're going through now to set the tax rate. So this, this is this is done uh, is about this time of year. So we'll be doing the tax rate for this this time next year. But David, when do you think you, Kim will get a call from the state? Oh, we're already talking to them again. On this? Well, on various things, but yeah, it's mentioned. Okay. Uh, we, we um, the Department of Revenue have become up along have come along a lot better in keeping in touch with us over the time being. And our person, Lauren Aldrich, is very much on the ball. Okay. In fact, she sent us some stuff the other day and we've been looking at that. And she'll be coming in, I'd imagine, in January or February and wanting to think, complete a thing called the LA-9, which is a um, plan for going forward for the reval. They've extended. They, they've recently extended the period, right? This recertification period used to be Later three on. years, right? Correct. Yep. And now it's five. Yeah. yeah. So yes or no? Is this a useful exercise? Does it turn out to be? Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Important because I think you know there. Not that this happens anywhere around here, but there could be situations that. Um, you know, a particular class of property goes under the wire, and you know something goes it either goes way low or goes way high. I mean, it, 
in the interim years, it's, you know, they're still monitoring these things. So you still have to meet these requirements, but I think the checks and balances is just a really like refreshing thing. Um, you know, make sure that you're really doing a good job at, mm -hmm. at your job. Um, it also helps, I think some of the, um, you know, in the assessor's office, there's always a tad of, of negativity because these are people's these are people's pockets that we're talking about. You know, this is their income. And so this is just a, a sort of to say, look, the state has said this is OK. Well, I'm not just pulling this value out of the air. Um, so, you know, it's sort of a, a bit of a, a pat on on your shoulder to say, you know, you're, you're doing a good job and, and you're keeping your town where you're supposed to. You have self audit procedures, too, right? In, in, in room between the actual formal certifications? Yeah. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I would think so. Um, yeah, yeah, you still have to meet all the requirements of the DOR. You still have to have all your um, classes within that 10% range. You know, you still have to complete the inspections and so on and so forth. Um, but when they come in, they're just really on top of all of that. They're just verifying mm -hmm. that you're doing it. So, David, how do you, do you know how we stand with inspections right now? Because last year, I'm not sure many got done. I'm the, uh, I'm sure there wasn't. Uh, but again, uh, we are. Uh, that's one of our items that Kim and I and Sean have to talk about because we're looking at getting some money from the town to do the inspection to get some help with them. Okay. Going forward, at least on the residential and the exempts. So we'll see where that is in the future. So, so are those noted on the? card for each yeah. each time you do one okay we have so a, what's a, called a visit history on the card and we complete that every time we go out so is that a money issue or a principal assessor's time issue in other words it's the probably it's going to be a money issue this time but from my understanding we've already been more or less guaranteed a hundred thousand dollars so okay. we're not worried about it all right so when you look at a card out there you should see a inspection within the last 10 years on the card? Either Ideally. an inspection or a note that says that you are not, I don't know about vision, but in Patriot, um, there's a note that you can put entry denied because yep. homeowners oh, okay. have the right but to- somebody, to... somebody tried to do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm up. I'm at, at 12.02 PM. I wanna make sure that uh, we, um, is there anything else you wanna, gentlemen wanna talk about? No, this has been very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate yes. It. And I can I can now pose for at least another month that I actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm going to refer them all to you, Richard. Exactly. So, that you know. Um, um, uh, I'd like to. I need to come in and sign a couple of things. When would you like me to do that, Teresa? Oh, she's. You're muted, Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. What about next meeting? I, I'm going to I'm going to get to that. I just want to make oh, sure okay. that I get my. Appointment with Teresa. You hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, there you go. Um, I'm here pretty much all the time. So okay. tell me when's good. Seems like I'm here all the time. <laughs> okay. Um, are you around tomorrow afternoon? Yes. Are the are the documents all ready? Yep. Yes. All right. Let me uh, I'm I'll going be to there too. So I'd love to say hello if we, when you pop in, just well, pop into me. Thank you. Not, not that many people want to see me, so that's good. <laughs> um, um, uh, I'm thinking tomorrow, if I get back from Boston early enough uh, to come in in the afternoon. Okay. All right. So I'll call you first. Sounds good. Now, I propose uh, a next meeting of November 8th, Thursday, November 18th. Okay. Is that the normal Thursday? It's not because the eleventh oh. is a the eleventh is a holiday. Oh, okay. Hold on. Kim, I, think I have a board meeting for Greenfield as well. I believe. Let me just check the calendar um, here in Greenfield. While Kim's doing that, can I ask a question? Yeah. Are you guys locked under the second Thursday, or would some other time work better? So Kim's going to be tied up through the end of the year. I'm not locked in Greenfield on Thursday. I'm not locked in. Yeah, the we, we could Thursday. do another time. It would seem to me that Kim scheduled uh, should um, should uh, control. Well, I know Ken's busy at this time. You're running up and down mountains. <laughs> oh, I don't care. I I do like a certain date every month. It's easier to plan. Well, just not Thursdays is what I'm saying. Okay, that's fine. 
All right. Well. I yeah, Thursdays I do have another I have a meeting at one o'clock with the Greenfield Board of Assessors, but I could do Wednesdays. Wednesday or any other day, really. So Wednesday the tenth or Wednesday the eight the uh, seventeenth? Is that no, I'm tied up the seventeenth. The tenth would be fine for me. I can do the tenth. The tenth is Wednesday okay. the tenth at eleven AM. Okay. That's good. So Kim, when do you think Kim, when do you think you're going to be able to join full time? So the uh, hope is, I mean, I, fingers crossed before the end of the year, but um, yeah. they have not yet filled the position. Um, they actually haven't posted the chief assessor position here in, in Greenfield. Um, okay. They posted an assistant assessor's position. Um, so I don't know how what's happening with that, but um, what the plan is, is for me to get the tax bills into Munis, make sure that they're working. And then once that's done, I'm done. So that could okay. be, I mean, it could be as early as November, but I'm assuming probably early to mid December. Okay. Have you done your tax rate yet in Greenville? Okay. No. Your classification hearing or vote? That doesn't usually happen. I was really surprised to hear that ours in Amherst was so early, but um, usually that's about mid November. Yeah, that's the same with us. We don't usually have oh, okay. this early. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think, I think David wanted it, or people wanted to get it before the new council people took over. <laughs> I might have been. David, you're going to hang around? I'll be around, but the, uh, I'll be around last. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Just don't leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're in safe hands. So don't worry okay. about that. <laughs> it's really nice to see you, Kim. Thank you. Yes. You guys too. Hopefully yeah. soon we can actually be in person. That would yeah, be great. Right. Yeah. yeah, gentlemen, anything else you want to talk about? I'm set. Okay, I move to adjourn to Wednesday, November 10th at 11 a.m. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Thank aye. you, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, David you. and Kim. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Have, Have a, a nice week. day. Bye all. Have a good weekend. You too. David, I won't.